everyone and welcome back to Emkin Gardening. Today is a very exciting day for me. I've been anticipating this day for several years. I have finally gotten my hands on a bulb that I've been dying to plant for a very long time and that is alliums. Specific alliums. If you remember, we did our color blends order back in August and we recommend you ordering your bulbs that early because they sell out very quickly of the varieties that you might want. So I had always missed that cutoff time of when I could buy bulbs for the season and I never got a chance to get alliums because they would always sell out. But not this year. This year I was on my game and I ordered the two varieties that I've been dying to plant and that is the Globemaster and the Ambassador Alliums. Now these two varieties of Alliums are pretty similar in their look. If you remember the Alliums that we were looking at, they are that tight ball type bloom that have those individually star shaped blooms all the way around the orb. Now these two varieties have differences that we will get into when we do a little bit more of a close-up look on them, but we are very excited to have these finally in our garden. Starting with the Globemaster. Now when Colorblend sends out their allium bulbs, they pack them in bags of five because the bulb is so big. They look like ginormous garlic bulbs almost, but they're huge. They're about the size of a baseball, very large. So they send them out in packs of five just to make sure that there's enough airflow that gets around them while they're packaged up and being sent on their way. So the Globe Master is going to get 34 to 38 inches tall and they're going to have nice strong stems. They do have some foliage that will come up first, but obviously the most striking part is going to be the bloom. They want full sun and well-draining soil. They are zone four through seven, so they are those two growing zones lower than ours in a six, so that's perfect. The difference between the allium bulbs compared to some of the other bulbs that we have in planting is they are very late in the season to bloom. So think about these are not going to bloom until late June. And by that time, a lot of the other annual annuals are going to have already picked up and started blooming alongside them as well. So it's going to be a beautiful show by the time these are blooming. So again, very late in the season, end of June is when they're going to start blooming. So the Globe Master has eight inches of diameter in their bulb size. That's huge for those really tightly star shaped blooms all packed together to form an eight inch orb. It is a light lilac pink color, which is going to be beautiful. And just such a showstopper with the height. We will be planting all of these in our front flower bed along the fence. So they're going to be striking and one of the very first things that you see on our street when you go by. The second variety is the Ambassador Allium. Just look at this, this is huge. Look at those roots already coming. So the Ambassador is a little bit different than the Globe Master. The Ambassador is actually going to be taller. It's going to be 10 inches taller than the Globe Master. So it's going to be getting 44 to 48 inches tall. That is huge. Now, the bloom size is slightly smaller at six inches in diameter around. Still with those very tightly packed star-shaped blooms all the way around, they are going to be a rich purple color. So we're going to have this stair-stepping effect going on when we're planting of rich purple and a light lilac pink color. It's going to be stunning. We're going to try to do it in an AB pattern so you get like a zigzag wavy effect happening with the really tall ambassador, kind of smaller, tightly bound orbs, and then the slightly shorter by 10 inches, um, Globemaster with the big eight inch bulbs around. 
the Ambassador is very similar to the Globemaster in that it's a four to seven zone. It likes full drainage, full sun. It is also a very late blooming bulb. So end of June is when the Ambassador is also going to be in bloom. When we plant these, like all of our other bulbs, we're going to put the pointy end on top and the, obviously the roots at the bottom of the hole. Alliums want to be very deep. So we are going to be auging our holes down to a seven inch depth. They're going to be the deepest of the bulbs that we've been planting. So we're going to be down at a seven inch depth. We're going to do our normal way to plant bulbs. We're gonna aug, put our biotone in, cover it up, and allow these alliums to get all the chill hours that they need over the winter in order to bloom and perform. It's going to take a long time for these ones to bloom. Again, very late, but their blooms are so big that they require that amount of time and that amount of chill hours. So if you've noticed behind me and along the front flower bed, there is a beautiful transformation that has occurred. Ryan spent a lot of time this week cleaning out our front flower bed. He went through all of the plants and pulled the sunflowers. He pulled all of the tomatoes, all of those annual snapdragons and dahlias. We are not saving dahlia bulbs. Maybe one year we'll save them, but not this year. We're, we're treating them as annuals this year. So he pulled all of that. He cleaned it up so nicely, cleaned up the front of our front flower bed fence area along the sidewalk, made it look nice and neat. This is in preparation for winter, but it's also going to allow us to have a clean slate when we're planting our alliums in the bed this year. And I love transformations like this because, you know, by the end of the season, and we pushed it pretty far because we wanted the birds to get as much um, forage as they could out of the sunflowers. So we pushed it pretty far, but at the end it was looking pretty tattered. And so it's just such a wonderful transformation. It feeds my soul seeing something that is kind of spent, cleaned out, and a fresh slate revealed. So. Yay to Ryan for cleaning out the flower bed. And now we are ready to plant. all 10 of the Globemaster in. We did an AB pattern coming in until the very center of the fence and then we decided to do the same variety as like the steep point and then it goes. Does that make sense? So middle is the same variety and then AB pattern all the way to the end of the fence. There are going to be plants planted in between all of those bulbs, annuals, when we're doing all of our annual planting next year. So I'm just really excited. I've always wanted alliums. They're heavy feeders, so we put a lot of biotone in there. And then we will hit them again in the springtime with more, just because we know that alliums love their food and nutrients. So, 
Again, we're really excited. This is like a dream come true, true for me, so I hope you all are as pumped as me. If you liked this video, give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Let us know if you have ever tried alliums like this in your garden and if you were successful and, you know, if they were everything that you hoped they would be and more. And please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any Emkin content. We're almost done with our bulb planting. We have another tulip video coming up. It's a perennial tulip blend variety coming up for you. And then our very last bulb video is gonna be coming up too. So this has been really exciting and we hope you are inspired with all of the different varieties of tulips and daffodils and alliums that we've been planting and you aspire to have them in your garden one day as well. I hope you're having a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye!